We pray this morning fervently and faithfully for our country. We pray for the American family beset by a moral crisis and spiritual sickness so much deeper than partisan politics. The puny language of red states and blue states will not save us now. This is not about red and blue. This is not about right and left. This is about right and wrong. And, and the violence we saw yesterday is wrong. It dishonors, disrespects, and disavows the dignity and sanctity of human life all human life, the recognition that whether we are presidents or just residents, live in the White House, a tiny house, or no house at all, our lives are all precious in the sight of the God who created us. All souls are mine. That's what God says. All souls are mine. And so we condemn yesterday's violence in the strongest possible terms. Moreover, we must see that what happened to Mr. Trump is not only an attack on him, but an attack on all of us. Dr. King is still right. We're tied in a single garment of destiny, caught up in an inescapable network of mutuality. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. Dr. King is still right. The ultimate weakness of violence is that it is a descending spiral, begetting the very thing it seeks to destroy. Finally, across the yawning chasm of our partisan differences, we must be very clear. Yesterday's attack is an attack on all of us because it is an attack on democracy, the sacred and precious right of the American people to choose and to do so nonviolently. And if we lose that, we lose the very idea of America, right? Here in America, we have noisy, rambunctious arguments. We have arguments in the public square. They get loud. Every four years, every two years, every year, we have loud, rambunctious arguments in America about the direction of the country, and the whole point of those arguments is to have the arguments instead of violence. That's the whole point. Everybody gets to have their say. And then with our ballots, not with bullets, but with ballots, we get to hear the four most powerful words ever uttered in a democracy, the people have spoken. And so with one voice, around every corner, under every shade tree. We must condemn this violence. We must condemn violent acts and violent words. One leads to the other. One reinforces the other. Hear me. Violent acts and violent words. Scripture says life and death are in the power of the tongue, and we are seeing the ways in which that is literally true. There is a coarsening rhetoric of political violence in our country, that must be condemned no matter who does it or unleashes it. The young man who fired those shots yesterday from an assault weapon was no patriot. We know very little about him, but we can be clear about this. He was no patriot. And neither were the people who attacked our capital and assaulted police officers and tried to stop the nonviolent transfer of political power on January 6th. They are no patriots, and he is no patriot. And we cannot condone one and condemn the other. They are cut from the same cloth. We must cry foul. We must call out the hypocrisy of anybody who would try to condone one and condemn the other. Either one, right? We must be consistent. This awful and ugly and dehumanizing rhetoric that leads to violence is deeply concerning. So I'm in prayer for our nation. May God do what Dr. King and others set out to do years ago, redeem the soul of America. Let the people speak. Let us hear their voice. And so I stand this morning to say I choose peace. I choose justice. I choose righteousness. I choose mercy. Let us pull back from the abyss. I choose all of us. If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, pray with their lips, pray with their legs, seek my face, Turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and heal their land. We deserve better than this, right? We deserve better than this. And the precious little babies that we will bless this morning, they deserve so much more than this. It's prayer time.